Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, everybody. We are now on to our fourth round of our Season 4 Invitational for the MTG Paper Legacy Discord. I'm your guy, Oliver V. Up above me, we have the one and only Prez BOTW. Prez, how are you doing today? I am doing great, and I am ready for the long haul. <laughs> that ain't that the truth. We are officially at the point in the bracket where the top half is no longer happening. We are now at the bottom bracket for the next couple of rounds. Uh, so we'll be seeing this round, which we'll be having eternally surprised on Jeskai Stoneblade, up against Malfion, one of my favorites, Bant Food Chain. Uh, after this round, the winner of this match will go ahead and face the winner of the Quirios and Rax match. That will be the semifinals for the loser bracket. And the winner of that's going to go on and try to face Tensai to take down the finals of the loser bracket and get a chance to play Dalibor and upseat the bracket to win this Season 4 Invitational. So, Prez, I got a real question for you here. Who do you think is favored? Um, I'm actually not entirely sure, because malfi has got a really good combo game, but at the same time, Eternally Surprised, I think, has the much better fair plan, and I think that given that it's a Ragavan-based deck that's a Stoneforge package as well, I think that you could potentially just get an early start there with a Ragavan and just run away with the rest of the game. Uh, especially given the amount of permission that you have, you, your goal is basically going to try and make sure that Malfi never resolves a food chain. Yeah, the one fantastic thing about Food Chain, and some of our previous commentators have talked about this, is Food Chain pretends to be a combo deck. And really, it's a mid-range control deck that has this kind of threat of comboing out. The really great thing for Malfi in this matchup is the only way that his um, Mist Hollow Griffins and Eternal Scourge are going to hit the graveyard are going to be off of combat or being countered. Uh, yeah. Because there's only the uh, the Source of Plowshares and Prismatic Ending form of removal, at least in the main board, you don't really need to worry about it as much. Um, Malfi has kind of worked around this already with this food chain list, which is really cool. Um, no, typically, food chain lists just run Uros as the main way for you to get your Mistala Griffins that are in the graveyard back into exile and kind of keep that value train rolling. But uh, Malfi has gone ahead and put in the good old beater Merktide region, basically just to be an alternative threat in these mid-range fair matchups, and then also to get those Mistala Griffins back into the gra back into exile. Yeah, exactly. Um, and we actually saw just a little spidget of uh, the end of a round there. I think it was two rounds ago. Malfi just going, playing out an 8-8, eight, eight, uh, playing out the 8-8 eight, eight, uh, Merktide region and then having it close out the game from there. <laughs> I'll be totally honest, when Malfi first started doing this, which I think we saw like the week after Modern Horizons 2 came up, um, he played one of our Tuesday night fight nights, which happen uh, every Tuesday on this same Twitch stream. Uh, he played it with this Murktide region, and me as another food chain player, I'm like, I don't like it. Uh, I don't like it. Give me another. Give me another flex slot. Give me another. Give me another endurance. Give me another card. Give me. A, give me the second walking ballista back. Uh, but it's been incredibly impressive just for these fair mid range battles. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, and same thing as well. I heard it mentioned earlier as well. You know, Space Whale was a huge thing, but Merktide Region just closes games so much faster. It's so much better. It it's a two turn clock in so many games. <laughs> yeah. It's a it's amazing. Um. And then we also got to talk about this Stoneblade deck. Uh, the coolest thing about this Stoneblade deck for me is we have the main board uh, Narset Parter Veils, which will be uh, kind of relevant if there's a combo off turn that's relying on kind of chaining a couple Ice Fang Quaddles and Uro draw effects. Mm -hmm. But then we also have the one main board Meddling Mage, which is always so cool to see in these open deck list tournaments, just because you know you know what's in your opponent's deck. You know what the potential things are to blow you out. So uh, I, I love to see that. Yeah, no, it'll definitely be good, so. Yeah, and it looks like both players are keeping sevens, which is uh, good, and Eternally Surprised will be on the play here. So, Eter Eternally was what seed again coming into this? I forget. Uh, was Eternally, it... I believe, was fifth seed overall. Oh, uh, that's quite high. Yeah, Eternally Surprised is fifth, Malfi's 13th. However, though, in the lower bracket, seeding doesn't matter. Oh, Oh, eternally surprised. Why do you got to do this to me? Foils of my favorite invasion island. How dare you? Oh, be, be still my heart. And then we get to see those beautiful, beautiful or border ponders. Uh, pro tip for everyone in the crowd who really, really loves that and wants signed cards. A Dan Scott signing is coming up halfway through this month. So make sure you get on that if you want to get those old border ponders uh, signed sometime in the next year. Yeah. <laughs> so Birds of Paradise get... coming down. Yeah, and then fetch land here. So the thing about birds is birds could potentially allow Malfi to go off as early as turn two, depending on what his hand looks like. 
Yeah, that was another consideration that I know Malfi had coming into this tournament of playing the Birds of Paradise over the typical noble hierarchs that you tend to see from these bant lists. Um, the real reason, ironically enough, is primarily to block Merit Lage and then to make Prismatic Ending also be able to remove a Jace the Mind Sculptor. Those are, the, awesome. those are the two reasons to play it over the noble hierarch, really. Um, as uh, many, de as many um, uh, Merit Lodge players will t tell you, Birds of Paradise is an amazingly annoying card. It's just one yeah. of those things that's like, oh, that's a speed bump that I wasn't expecting to have to deal with. Uh, who, and we're seeing a Swords come down really aggressively on this Stoneforge Mystic. Yep. Um, I, I like to me, I actually don't mind that very much, uh, given that Cauldra Complete, you know, being, uh, I believe it's a seven drop. Yeah. Uh, that card will mess you up. I Absolutely. like this play specifically because of getting the culture complete here, where yeah. you have plenty of time before you have to deal with it, unless there's another Stone Forge. <laughs> uh, number two of the three Stone Forges comes down quickly for Eternally Surprise. Gonna go ahead and get the Umazawa Jite as the only other equipment in the deck. Ooh, yeah, there is no. Oh, there is a Batter Skull in the sideboard. Okay, but otherwise, yeah, in the main deck, there are just those two pieces of equipment. Showing off that beautiful sign, Molar, uh, Umazawa Jite. Ooh, be still my heart. Press and I are just yeah. loving all the cardboard that's coming down on the table right now. Oh, yeah. So Malfi does need to get the ball rolling a little bit. There's, well, you are getting a mana advantage here. There, there's this certain ticking clock that's going on at the moment because of all of the, um, the high card advantage plays that Eternally Surprise is making at the moment, basically yeah. just playing bodies that are getting other th cards that will need to be dealt with eventually. Yeah. So here's the other question is if you have, okay, so here's a manipulate fate. This is an amazing two mana draw four. This it is, is so good. So for those who uh, don't know, you go ahead and you get three cards, put them from, or from your deck, put them directly into exile and get to draw a card. Um, Eternally Surprise recognizes how good this card actually is, despite what it looks oh like. My oh, we're seeing the massive force, force war. <laughs> I love it. This is exactly the fight that you make. Um, yeah. As Prez alluded to, this is a draw four in the deck because you go ahead and get either three Mist Holler Griffins or um, in one of the Eldrazi, the what is it called? Oh, Eternal my Scourge. Why am I forget? Eternal Scourge and two Mist Holler Griffins and get to draw a card off of it. It's insane. It's bad. Yeah. It is low key better than Ancestral Recall in this deck. Yeah. Same thing as well. Pitching a Miss Hollow Griffin to a Force of Will. Oh, feels so good. Just Chef Kiss. Oh my goodness. Amazing. Yeah. All of a sudden it's like, wait, this Force isn't a bad card. It's not just two for warning myself. Ooh, ooh, it's truly free. Yeah. Another thing of note here too. Oh, takes in Misty Rainforest is the last card. So huh. that must mean that there was it eternally scourge was it eternal scourge and one Miss Hollow Griffin it was that we saw? One Miss Hollow of Fetch Land and then an Eternal Scourge. Oh, there so there must be two Miss Hollow Griffins in hand? Could be. So that's the other thing, though, too, is that if this is um, if this is a food chain next, then we go in. Uh-oh. <laughs> Ooh. The counter magic was already used up on this manipulate fate. <laughs> so what's really interesting, we didn't we see force pitch force from Malfi? Uh, we did. So I'm confused why we would do that if we have Mist Hollows in hand. Um, I'm not entirely sure, unless he just figures that he wants the other Mist Hollows in deck. Maybe he has a second Manipulate Fate in hand? Could be, potentially. That is an interesting line that we wouldn't just maximize it, especially if you're planning to jam the food chain on this next turn. Yeah. Also, you hilariously, don't... Exile Touch from Cauldra is actually a downside against this board state. <laughs> Death Touch would be better, it turns out, against yeah. exactly this deck. Yeah. Um, the reason it's so interesting not to go get the uh, the other Mist Hollow Griffin there is you'd be putting nine power into play. It speeds up the clock by one turn by attacking for nine rather than six. Actually, it speeds it up, yeah, by exactly one turn. And then additionally, you don't have to worry about Wraths at all. So there's some, there is the possibility of taking that choice if you're really worried about Terminus coming down immediately afterwards. However, yeah. you this is open deck list, and so the players are well aware that this is just Stoneblade with absolutely no Terminuses or any other Wrath catch-up mechanic. Yeah. That's another thing I wanted to mention as well, is that if you're Malfi and you're holding a Prismatic ending in hand, do you try and hit the Stoneforge before it comes down, or do you just hit the Germ Token now because then the Cauldra's stranded? I think you hit the Germ Token. Yeah. 
I agree. I think the first one was good, and especially knowing that there's an Umazawa's GT in hand as well now. Like, oh yeah, so he did have a second manipulate fate. That explains why he did not grab the other two uh, Miss Hollows. I imagine we're going to see uh, another land disappearing and the two Miss Hollow Griffins. Yeah, and uh, as well, one of the other reasons why the land is getting pulled out is just because Malfi doesn't want to draw it. Oh, yeah, pulls out another food one. chain. Ooh. Oh, that's a good choice as well. I, I, I think that's fine, actually, given that if this is main deck and you know that there's no answers for a resolved food chain in the main deck, then you're not worried at all about this. This food chain is going to be sticking. Well, that there is prismatic. Said, there is though, the prismatic endings that you have to worry about. At the same time, you don't there are fully no need it if you're endings in... in the main deck. Oh no, there are three. Yeah, I there's there's three that. prismatic endings <laughs> in the main board of eternally surprised lists. Yeah. Um, the the one thing though is if a prismatic ending is being spent on the food chain at this current board state, you aren't horribly worried whatsoever because you're the one who it, um has every basically you're the one with all the power at the moment. So you're going to be going in, swinging for six in this great race, getting down to 12, and then you're putting 12 power on board immediately to threaten. You get what I mean? Yeah. So for those who are keeping track for bingo, uh, this is storm equals four, if you missed it the first couple times. What's interesting was choosing not choosing to attack with the Eternal Scourge. Yep. Yeah. And then, Before... yeah, there's the prismatic ending just to hit the germ. Interesting. The prismatic um, ending makes a lot of sense, but it does feel like we missed three damage there at the moment by not attacking with the Eternal Scourge. I think probably the reason why he didn't attack with the Eternal Scourge is that if there is a... Um, hmm, there are no lightning bolts. Okay. I'm not entirely sure why he wouldn't have attacked then. Yeah, it's interesting. Because because you have two and only one mana up, no matter yeah. what... If one of them is removed with swords or whatever, yeah. you still can immediately cast all of them out. Even if yeah. a bolt is spent on the Eternal Griffin, it, I mean, the exile effect, the the hidden part of Eternal Scourge, that if it's targeted by a spell or an ability, it goes into exile immediately. That'll just make it so it's castable again. But yeah. regardless, a ton of power is in play. It is nice for Eternally Surprised here, though, where uh, there is it is not onboard lethal, even without GTA activations. Yeah. That being said, though, uh, having to pitch expressive iteration of that Forbes of Will is not, probably not the best feeling in the world. Oh, definitely not. But you need, if you lose that germ token, you're so going to lose this race. Yeah, there's no, this is your one way to really be able to um, pressure out. So like you said, there are no, there's no reach in this Stoneblade deck. No extra form of damage besides the creatures. However, this is still two-turn lethal with if we get Jite on and equipped this turn, right? Yeah. And uh, yes, Bear Scourge was the start of the chain. Um, the only thing I can think of is that Malfi was trying to protect it from getting hit by a spell and exiling it before the food chain went off. So that would be the only thing I can think of. Cast Merc Tide. Oh, this is huge. That's a body. Exiles four instances of sorceries. This is a 7-7. Seven, seven. Oh. Here's the... Here's the thing with that food chain in play, though. All that that does is stonewall a single creature that's a, a single one of the missile griffins that's coming back. And because yeah. of the interaction with food chain, what he's what Malfi's going to be able to do is go ahead and attack with them, exile which it doesn't matter, exile whichever one's being blocked by the missile griffin, then get pseudo vigilance with all of his creatures by exiling them to food chain and recasting them, and then can just do that again to do a chump block. You get what I mean? Um, yeah. It is going to be fogging a decent amount of damage in this race, unfortunately, but it isn't the end of the world. It's really just a stone wall more than it is an actual beater and uh, for the changing of the math with this race. Yeah. And then this is the cool part about food chain as well, is that you just exile and recast all the cards. So it's like pseudo vigilance. Yeah, it's great. Uh, Ferdo, that is a uh, Caldra complete underneath the germ token there. The good old five, five germ right now. Yeah. <laughs> Battle crane. <laughs> So let's see. We are still in Malfi's second main, or yeah. And of note here too, with the exile touch, like these Miss Holographs will just get it. Like they can just constantly come back out. So as long as Malfi has one of these creatures survive till the next turn, he'll be able to continue going on. 
And even then, as long as there's one of them in exile, or even if they're all in exile, he literally just has to tap three mana to cast one of them, and then he can just go off again. Yeah, and the the really interesting thing for Eternally Surprised here is oh. normally if when you're against Bant, Bant Food Chain in this state, you have to be on your toes because every single cantrip has the chance of finding what is in the typical Bant plans of five combo pieces that win the game immediately. But because of how Malfi constructed his game plan to be as fair as possible and really be focusing on the grind mid-range aspect, there's only a single walking ballista to find. There's none of the recruiters, which are typically seen in these Bant lists, so go ahead and find the two of walking ballistas. Um, so really, you only have to worry about this fair game plan with the potential chance of Malfi spiking the one of walking ballista that's in the list. Yeah. But that risk is way less likely than what it is against a typical Bant food chain list. Yeah. And of no here too, if anyone is curious about why Malfi's not tapping any lands, uh, he just went Eternal Scourge make infinite mana for creatures. It's it's pretty nice. All of a sudden Which, it's just like, I'll, I'll keep these lands back to cast spells. Thank yeah. you very much. And also, also the other, because the escape cost counts as casting, you're allowed to use the food chain mana to escape Uro. Oh, when Uro, oh, when was it? When I first started playing Food Chain, I definitely had to talk to one or two judges about that just to make sure. And our lovely resident joke, Pope Hoffy, did have to consult his uh, his, his local uh, judge boss, the the higher up above him, just to make sure that it was correct that you can do that with Food Chain mana. Yep. And this is also actually really bad for Eternally Surprised. Uh, this Ice Fang Codal has Death Touch, which is really bad for that Murktide region. Yeah. All of a sudden, um, attack because before, yeah, oh, cast yeah. brainstorm draws three cards, concedes, and that's all she wrote. And this was the kind of the perfect game to show exactly how food chain isn't really a combo deck as much as it is this amazing mid range deck, uh, yeah. that's able to turn these mist holographins into the most amazing vigilance, can never die, uh, <laughs> mist holographins continually cast. Oh, it's it's fantastic, really great, great game. Prez, you want to bring us into sideboarding? Uh, yeah, just one second here. I'm a little bit behind on part of that. So I'll go. I'll, I'll yeah, start go us off ahead. with uh, Malfi's food chain sideboard. So Malfi's coming to us today with two Carpet of Flowers, one Fluster Storm, two Veil of Summers, one Collector Oof, two Containment Priests, one Meddling Mage, one Sylvan Library, two Endurances, one Peacekeeper, that good old Esper, uh, Esper Vile uh, card, one Foundation Breaker, the new Evoke Reclamation Sage, uh, and one Solitude. Uh, what do you like out of this sideboard plan, Prez? I actually really like the Solitude, to be totally honest. Um, your ability to just constantly play it out, and or more to the point, you being able to just cast it, hitting a Cauldra complete, that can't be hit by force negation. Um, you know, like Source of Plashers versus Prismatic Ending can be hit by it. Solitude cannot. Uh, being able to deal with the germ token there, being able to deal with anything else, you can just cast it for free if you have Food Chain out. I just really, really like the card in this particular matchup, honestly. Um, I, I don't mind the Meddling Mage. I think it might be too slow, though. Yeah, for me, what I'm really looking at with this cyber plan is I really like bringing in Sylvan Library. The issue with it, of course, is, I mean, the big issue that's happened with Sylvan Library ever since Modern Horizons 2, which is all the prismatic endings. Um, additionally, Eternally Surprised, while this is a little bit of a mid-rangey matchup that it will be going long, Eternally Surprised is going to be able to put on substantial pressure, largely from the Cauldre Complete and uh, Ragavans, and just kind of that whole Stoneblade plan, right? I do I do really like uh, bringing in Flush to Storm and potentially Veils just as a way to interact with your opponent's Force of Wills because you know that your opponent is going to be on them. At the same time, um, there is... You can juke a little bit of... Um, like, you can... Oh, wait, what am I talking about? Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm completely wrong on that train that I'm about to go on. But Carpet of Flowers, I like as well. Uh, not as much when you are going to be on the play. However, I like it a lot more on the draw to try to get ahead. It is a little bit of a bad card sometimes in terms of a card that you don't get much value from in the late game. So that's why it can be a little risky. Carpet is, of course, fantastic against Delver plans that are also taxing your mana bases. But that really isn't something that's happening in Eternally's list. Um, so there, there's a lot that could be done. But it's all kind of marginal movements, to be honest. There's no real hammer for this matchup whatsoever, in my opinion. Flusterstorm, I do enjoy as well, to be totally mm -hmm. honest. I would like bringing that in. Um, I like that one, too. Yeah. Is there anything else you want to say about the sideboard before we go over? Um, No, I think that's just uh, just about good there, yeah. 
Um, I, I think that all makes sense. But uh, over on internal side, for sideboard, we have one Engineer Explosives, one Blazing Volley, one Grafdigger's Cage, one Hydro Blast, one Meltdown, one Pithing Needle, two copies of Pyroblast, two Surgical Extraction, one Containment Priest, one Lavinia Azorius Renegade, one Meddling Mage, one Wear Tear, and one Batter Skull. Real quick, I totally forgot. Is Eternally Surprised the one on 61 cards? Yes. That's so cool. All right, so the old the old trick with uh, doing the 61-card main board is to have a 14-card sideboard, so you get to take out an extra card when you really know what you want. Uh, that's not something that Eternally Surprised is able to do here today, of course. Eternally did come to us with 15 cards in the sideboard. Um, <laughs> oh, so, so hilarious. I absolutely love it. Um, the th I do enjoy the idea of bringing in uh, the Pyroblasts. The Pyroblasts are quite a good point of interaction. Um, yeah. Again, we talked about how clutch it is for Malfi that all the points of removal from Mist Holographins um, is putting things into exile, namely the swords, right? Um, yeah. So I do like bringing in those. At the same time, there's nothing else that I hugely like. Uh, you can, if you want, bring in the wear tear to deal with food chain. However, yeah. it, food chain is going to do its damage the vast majority of the time when it's already in play, unless you are specifically holding up the tear part for the first time that you start looping it. Yes. Uh, yeah, there's, there's again, this, this is the same sort of sideboard. We're in this matchup. There's no real hammers to be bringing in. Um, of note, Pithy Needle does not stop food chain. It is nope. a mana ability. Do not try to do that if you are at home. Yeah. But we'll Lavinia have to see what only these... stops non-creature spells, so it doesn't stop that either. <laughs> exactly. Like the, nothing here is really that great for dealing dealing with food chain, and that's one of the reasons I'm I'm so in love with Malvi's choice of what to bring with to us today. It was a really really um, in my view, when I was looking at all the players and the certain decks that everyone was playing food chain was this great kind of juke plan where nobody had it on their radar. Really? You hear Malfi and you think of it that he's going to be bringing posts 95% of the time and five and the other 5% of the time you pretend that he's going to be uh, bringing stone blade, but I really like it. I think it was a really good choice. Yeah. And this is it too, is I did actually mention that I thought green post would have been a really good choice for this uh, invitational, but at the same time, I don't, uh, I actually really like this food chain deck too. Oh my goodness, so, there's Wastelands in this list? I yeah. totally missed that. All right, I like Carpet more. Oops, I, I guess I didn't fully look at this list. I like <laughs> Carpet a lot more now. All right, there, now we're done talking about sideboarding. There we go. That's one of three. We need three Wastelands for the bingo. <laughs> Show it to us, baby. Let's get that, let's get that box checked off. And Ragavan. we have Ragavan come down. Ooh. My goodness. Well, we saw just how powerful Ragavan can be in that last game. Specifically, ironically enough, in the denying plan on the opponent, which is not typically where Ragavan excels. I'm hitting the one-ofs that are really, really necessary. Yeah. Uh, but it came up with that last game up against uh, uh, Dalibor on Abzan uh, Dark Depths. Yeah. Oh, no. Malfi's discarding the hand size? That, that wasteland was aggressive and definitely paid, paid off. off. And oh. hit swords to plowshares off the ragged. Oh. <laughs> it's been so relevant. Oh my goodness. I love wow. seeing this. And for anyone who is uh, unaware as well, last round Tensai went turn one Blood Moon against an Abzan deck and then proceeded to attack with the Ragavan on turn three, hit a Mox Diamond, and then the following turn hit the Basic Forest. <laughs> Just get a two of the four potential outs underneath the Blood Moon. It was it was quite yeah. fantastic, but this is getting incredibly scary. Yeah. So, Malfi did the ponder. It was a shuffle, correct? Um, Malfi ponder shuffles. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Discards so, uh, the Griffin. Ooh, oof. that's not where you want that card in the graveyard. Eternally Surprised, also a little low on lands. Didn't make that uh, land drop on turn three, but you really don't need it when you got this monkey and can keep pounding out the treasures. Yeah. <laughs> no, stop cracking the treasures. I need three and play for bingo. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, buddy. <laughs> it turns out when you have the mana, you want to spend it most of the time. Who yeah. would have guessed? This thought? feels like a this feels like an absolute go get culture complete. Just crunch your in on your opponent, and Malfi's yeah. already just discarding and passing back. This is an absolute brutal game. Yeah, it's my mana, and I need it now. Yep. And then we're gonna put Calder Complete in right now. Smash for seven. This is a very fast clock. 
crunch. Down to nine. Hits manipulate fate. Gets another treasure token. I don't. I don't even think hitting land here. You can get back. No. Yeah, we're just oh, scooping it up. Scoops it up before we get the third treasure token. <laughs> <laughs> that was a very decisive game too. From eternally surprised there. Just no, that early no wasteland coming in, taking off the uh, tropical island. Wow. And this is exactly why you aggressively wasteland people, because sometimes you just absolutely win the game as a result of it. Uh, yeah. So that first game, we got to see the power of Food Chain playing the mid-range matchup, right? The just yeah. grind out. This game, we got to see the power of Wasteland and Ragavan. And ooh, is it good. Oh my goodness. You think sideboards change it all, Prez? Again, we kind of talked about how I really like Carpet of Flowers on the draw. I like the Carpet of Flowers on the play as well, now that I understand that there's actually Wastelands in this list. Yeah. <laughs> um, what do you, th do you think anything changes at all from what we previously talked about? We didn't really get to see a lot, to be totally honest. Um, I don't really think so. I, I still like the Pyroblasts for Eternal, just because that uh, the ability to put Miss Hollow Griffin in the graveyard instead of an Exile is huge, because that you need either a Murktide region or you need an Uro in order to get it into Exile so you can get the card back. Plus, it just generally hits good stuff, too, because, like, hitting a Manipulate Fade off of a Pyroblast feels real good. Yeah. I kind of wonder if... I do wonder if Malfi's taking the approach of going down on food chains as well. I do really like keeping at least three in these sorts of matchups just to make your Miss Solar Griffins uber-powered. But I kind of would like to see some endurances coming in. The only real interaction that it has is making it harder for um, the Murktide region to come down. But mm -hmm. yeah, I kind of just want another body, to be honest. Just like yeah. a decent body that can be contributing to this mid-range slam creatures into each other plan. We'll have to see yeah. if that's the line that Malfuge is choosing to take and bring in additional endurances. But Basic island. So both players are just land pass. Both players kept seven, correct? Uh, yes, both players yeah. kept seven for game three. Neither player changed up their approach to this sideboard plan whatsoever. Everyone just shuffled up and slammed them back down on the table. Yeah. So we got double basics here now, so the Wasteland plan is not going anywhere this game. <laughs> or at least not going anywhere fast. So if you just pass here, are you expecting a Ice Fang Kotal? Double fetch. I would. I also wonder if we are just playing or uh, wanting to jam and manipulate fate, but wanting to get another land in play before you play into days with it. I could see that. Um, yeah, it kind of depends, because if this is a dashed Ragavan, then I'd be a little bit worried about this. But if this is a dashed Ragavan into an Ice Fang Kotal, then oh my goodness. Yeah, you need to have days then at that point. Here's the yeah. question. If for some, if you dash it in, and for some reason Malfi flashes it in during the main phase before ooh. combat damage is declared, ooh, this is ooh meddling mage. <laughs> yeah, response flash <laughs> this in. <laughs> let's let's get rid of one of the potential names. Yeah. So draw will happen before, and I wonder what was named. Names food, names chain. food chain seems good. Who would have guessed? I I like that name a lot. Like it doesn't actually. Stop much, but it okay, sword stops nothing. <laughs> An aggressive use of the swords that does yep. tell us that Melfi is wanting to go ahead with the food chain game plan as soon as possible. I wouldn't be surprised if we have a slam here, yeah. And so, okay, so we're oh, up wait, on no, the green courses. sources yeah. here. So, this is not Miss Hollow Griffin mana. We can't even cast the food chain right now. It is no. a it is a very aggressive use of swords. I wonder why we did it on our turn. Not sure. It sounds like in the Rax versus Aquarios match, we have Pyroblast, Surgical, and Force of Will all in the stack at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Big brain. Manipulate and Manipulate Fate. Fate comes down. Again, this draw four better than Ancestral Recall. Let's go ahead and get uh, two Mistals and an Eternal Scourge in the exile pile. Let's see if it actually happens that way this time, though. Last time yeah. I was wrong, we saw land in that pile instead. There's one, two, and is this an actual draw four? Where's that last card, Malfi? Show it to me. So he's thinking about it decently. 
Oh, and brainstorm. brainstorm. Hmm. Okay. Well, still draw three. <laughs> Definitely. This is a good moment Not for us to thank our. Means. Yeah. This is a good <laughs> moment for us to stop and thank the people who are behind the scenes helping us run this show today. We have Mick Diff down at the tables right now with Malfi and the Eternally Surprised being our table spotter, helping us make sure we're under we understand everything that's going on and just making sure that we can communicate with them as necessary. Big thanks to Chaotic Bear, our TO, the man who or the man who's really behind everything that's involved with the invitational. The show could really couldn't happen without him. And also Mr. Jack Dax, who's been our resident streamer today and has been put, been putting in the long hours to make sure that we are getting this streamed all of y'all yeah big thanks, thanks to all well these to pie boy for it. doing a ton of spotting earlier as well true and, and pie boy will be back spotting later on as well yeah so it looks so like the wasteland did get cracked off yeah we spend it on the savannah right away and we see this prismatic vista coming down likely grabbing the planes yeah and this will turn death touch on if this does grab the planes yes it does so this codal now trades with anything Except for a cauldron. <laughs> nothing, nothing trades with cauldra. <laughs> Except for, Except for other, other cauldras. cauldras. <laughs> <laughs> I do love when I was when I first started playing and was super kitchen table. I did make an equipment deck all around the cauldra equipments. Um, yeah. the I actual to, cauldra equipments. <laughs> yes, the actual cauldra equipments. Uh, <laughs> cauldra complete is so much better than the original cauldra equipments. It's not even funny. Let me tell you. Yeah. Swinging in, get that gorgeous Legends uh, Sylvan Library in play. Man, that is Love beautiful. It. Love it. Hmm. So if you're Eternal, what do you want to be doing here? Because I want to have Prismatic Ending and spend it on this Sylvan Library right now. I'm fine doing nothing else on this turn. Just get the one of Sylvan Library off the table and out of the equation. Because unless yeah. you are putting on pressure, the Sylvan Library is an actual problem for you. Like If yeah. we're just sitting here staring at each other for a while, that's when it becomes a problem. But it looks like we're going to go ahead and get that Cauldra Complete. Yeah, so we're going to go grab Cauldra Complete here, which is really good. And then we're going to, I guess, find out if there's a... Um, uh, Another Swords. Well, another Swords, another Prismatic Ending, or... <laughs> My mind's on bingo right now. The GTA, because I need a creature that's holding two pieces of equipment. <laughs> <laughs> Our man, Fred's BOTW, is here. Not really caring about the game. Really only cares about what's happening on his bingo board. General, <laughs> go at us, please. Or whatever that is. Thank you so much for Got the follow. Please. There we go. Thank you very much. No chaotic bear. It would only be rigged if Prez actually had some control. This is why Prez can't be a spotter. Because yeah. then that's when he gets to influence what's happening with the game. We see the prismatic ending coming down, removing the Stoneforge Mystic, keeping that cauldron complete locked in hand until either another Stoneforge comes down or eternally gets to seven lands in play. Yeah, which I think is actually what you want to be doing in this particular situation. Um, I think that it might be very similar to game one, whereas that if we see a second Stoneforge Mystic here, then it's kind of like, uh, do you just wait and hit the Cauldra or the Germ? Oh, oh, he had the other equipment. <laughs> I actually really like it now. So it means that the other Stoneforge Mystics, normally you would kind of want to brainstorm them away at this point when both of the equipments are gone. Um... Or potentially get rid of one of the equipments in hand with the brainstorm and then make it so well, yada yada yada. You're getting value that way. However, what's happened now is because the calls compete is locked in hand, Eternally Surprise kind of does just want to jam in the or would want to keep the Stoneforge Mystics and get them into play just so that Etern uh, that um that culture complete is no longer a dead card in hand. Yeah. And that's the other thing, too, is that if you're in Malfi's position, I imagine you're probably just looking for a little bit more removal here. Just, uh, you do not want any creature connecting with that Umizou's GTA out. Uh, just with the ability to shoot down these Kotals is really bad. Because again, food chain is literally about chaining creatures from one mana cost to another. It's like pot, except it happens all in the same turn. <laughs> and, all from and all from hand. But no, yeah. as a resident player of 1-1 one, one creatures, let me tell you how good GTA is once it gets counters on it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the Metal Mage did come in. Oh, I like Ooh. this. Yeah, what do you I name think, here? I'd almost name Stoneforge Mystic, to be totally honest. Like, you have so many turns until Cauldra Complete is even remotely relevant. 
Or do you name Ragavan? Because if you or name Murktide. Ragavan, then it means you have nothing to equip the GT2. Murktide is another potential name here. Yeah. I don't Name's think I want to name... Force of Will. Okay. Ooh. Huh. That does make me wonder if we're going to be going ahead and jamming a food chain right now. Burb. Burb, come down. Then pass turn back. So we're up to five lands here. And then just pass turn back. Hmm. Immediately pass back. I'm totally surprised with the full five cards in hand in the grab. Yeah. Looks like Malfi forgot to use the Sylvan Library there. <laughs> Smash. A little unfortunate, <laughs> but... Food chain. Okay. Here we go. So needs to be force negations here. Yeah, which I actually don't know if there are any. Uh, there's a single force negation. Yeah, okay. Yeah, one single force negation. <laughs> uh, I think it's resolving. Probably. And are we going to town? Swords to plowshares. Oh, um, is this targeting meddling the meddling mage. mage? Okay, force of wills are now live. I like this. Yeah, I do too, actually. Four cards in hand left for eternally surprised. It's just going to be a brainstorm digging for Force of Wills. No, another, another sword. swords. This is interesting. Just getting rid of the clock, maybe? I guess it depends on what's in hand. It's interesting because as long as there's one Ice Fang in play, you aren't denying. Oh, it resolved. Huh. As long as food chain's in play, you aren't denying oh. the uh, all the exile creatures from coming in. Yeah. Because you can just chain whichever one. So that's oh. like, oh. Yes. Oh. oh. <laughs> that doesn't do... Oh, he just draws a card, I guess. Doesn't actually stop the counter spell, I don't think. Or shouldn't it? Uh, oh, no. Spells you control can't be yeah, countered can't this be countered. turn. It, yeah, it does interact with it. Oh my god, that's something for my bingo. <laughs> now I, I don't... need... Oh, I need so much stuff. <laughs> there were no blue spells cast. Did he drew a card from the veil? Um, Let's, oh. Can we stop them for a second, AJ? Did... Or, I'm sorry, uh, my, uh, Mike is doing it. I apologize. Hmm. So, of course, it looks like there's a little bit of confusion. Uh, while there was a blue spell cast, that was on Malfi's side. And Veil of Summer only lets you draw a card if your opponent has cast a blue spell this turn. Yes. Which was two Not swords. The case. Yes. We have those players. Uh... Looks, like, oh. looks like, conveniently, Malfi only had one card in hand. <laughs> so... We can actually put that back and just shuffle up with proper information and we're not ruining anything. Perfect. We got that nice and dealt with. Yeah, that Veil of Summer just countered as a counter spell. It was not a full cryptic command, thank goodness. But we're able to shuffle up and continue going forward. And, oh, is this the Endurance? I don't know if this is Mainboard Endurance or if this is a sign that more came in. But yeah. we now have a good amount of pressure on board. We are going to be able to start swinging in for nine, able to have a two-turn clock through one piece of removal. And, of Ooh. course, the one piece of removal has to be spent on the Endurance because <laughs> the other ones will come back. Yeah. Yeah, unless you can destroy the Miss Holographic. Mother of Runes. Hmm. So, he of quit. note, this is Mother of Runes, and uh, Eternal's at six six mana right now. 
So uh, if this next attack does not kill Eternally Surprised, and he's able to get the oh, he's able to get the second land uh, or the seventh land to be able to just cast the Cauldra complete. He'll have Mom Shield up for Cauldra. That being said, I don't it think it doesn't have vigilance enough. though. Like yeah, at a, at a certain point, you're not going to be able to race against this. Yeah. Well, and this is it. Is this next attack will be for nine, right? Yeah. I and imagine it, we'll be attacking with endurance here. Yeah. I think you just kind of have to. Tapping four. Whoa. Huh. I was not expecting him Foundation to bring breaker. in. I was not expecting him to bring that in. I wasn't either, specifically because when you look at the list, it seems to hedge so much around Culture Complete. Really, the only one good target is the Jite. Um, of course, Culture Complete being indestructible itself, quite relevant. And then Batter Skull, if he does decide to bring it in, of course, so much in the late, so often in the late game, you're never going to have it open. But we're seeing it come in and actually be very, very relevant. Yeah. Exiles the oh, source of plowshares on the endurance. Okay. Yep. Hitting the one creature that will actually stay exiled. <laughs> the one card that's worth removing. One card yeah. left in hand for Eternally Surprised, unfortunately. Unless that was the last card and the die counter has not been moved yet. Yeah. Well, if that's the case, that also means that Cauldra got shuffled back in off of a Brainstorm. Oh, that's very true. Hmm. That Going out of free that... life. Pseudo-Vigilance gets to cast him again. What Storm count now, Prez? Uh, lots. <laughs> <laughs> And we did find the seventh land. And looks like there was no nothing else in hand, so we did not even get to play out the Cauldra. So, wow. Malfi's going to take this one down. Again, we see how great Food Chain is at that mid-range grind, right? Where really, from internally yeah. surprised side, you just need to hit those permanents that are accruing so much card advantage, right? Yeah, uh, and we just got the results from the other match. Rax has taken down Quirios 2-0. So that means this next match is going to be Rax on Show and Tell versus Malfi, who I believe they faced in the first round. Am I correct? This is going to be a redemp a shot at redemption for Malfi. Yeah, this they were they were the round one match. So uh yeah, this is rematch hype. Yeah, thanks, Rax. <laughs> oh, Rax is here for it. I'm so excited. So this is a fantastic part of us getting to do the upper bracket and lower brackets. Uh we get to have the rematches, the chance for redemption. We do try to flip the lower bracket um just to make it so it isn't happening too often. But once you get to the top part of this upper bracket, it's it'll happen. There's no way to avoid it. This is yeah. incredibly exciting. We're gonna get to see if Malfi is gonna be able to take it down. Down, get the redemption and go on to face uh tensai for the loser bracket finals the bottom bracket finals um i i believe we're going to take just a little bit of a break about probably like five minutes maybe possibly 10 um i'm gonna go ahead and get that from our to just so we can be, uh, make sure but we'll be back with you i'll be back prez will be back and we'll be back to show you malfi try to take on racks yeah we will see you guys again shortly